Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Shelton Board of Education regular meeting in person um, at the Board of Ed office on Long Hill Avenue. Today is Wednesday, July 27, 2022, and it's 7.05 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Um, Joseph Tagliero. Excused. Lorraine Rosner. Here. Kate Butash. Here. Diana Meyer. Here. Patty Noonan. Here. James Rossetti. Here. Carl Rizzo. Here. Amy Romano. Here. Kathy Bush. Here. And the minutes will reflect that also in attendance Todd Applefinger, Carol Pedozo, Penn Saramage, Attorney Fred Stanick, and Christine Kinsella. Thank you. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, agenda item two. Um, I need a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a, a motion to amend the agenda. Okay. Um, I'd like to move that we move items four and five to committees, specifically um, item four, uh, healthy and balanced living curriculum framework to teaching and learning committee and the discussion of current policies on school discipline to uh, policy committee as we normally address these things in committee before we come to the full board. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Oh, Diana second. I'm sorry. Diana. I'm sorry. All right. Any discussion? Well, why, why does that have to, Madam Chair, why does it have to be moved into the committee? As, as you know, we, we don't have a lot of committee meetings as it is. Well, we are having we are having a committee, and I'm addressing this. I believe the superintendent's addressing it, and I'm also addressing it in my commentary as well. But I believe that all of these matters go to the subcommittee first. Um, one would be the policy, which you are vice chair, I believe, Mr. Rosetti. So, yeah. well, um, which one is that? Mm -hmm. Policy. policy. Yeah. yeah, and and we would bring it up because we would like to have all of the input and discussion and whatever we're going to work on revising and then bring it to the full board. But we haven't had, really had a lot of subcommittee policy. Well, we, well, we didn't. Yeah. Have, that's well, not true. You, we have had them a couple. I don't think just we just had more stuff in the prior uh, term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I interject as well because we asked for this to be put on the agenda. We had the votes to put it on the agenda. Okay. So out of respect, let's have the discussion. Okay, then, then and then from there, let's just bring it, to a it was just a discussion. We'll bring it to And then a from there, it could still go to the subcommittee. I think that's where it was heading, but just to have a discussion as a full board well, first. Well, it's, it's hard to have a discussion thing. about things that you don't really know what you're discussing about. We, we don't have, we don't have a format. We don't have a There's, there's a, a motion on, on, on the right. We board. spoke to the superintendent about okay, it. Okay, we're calling the vote. All those in favor of, of the... Amendment. Amendment. Aye. 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 Okay, should we do a roll, um, roll, um, yeah. roll yeah. vote? Yeah. Okay. I we were still discussing it. No, I just moved it forward. Okay. Lorraine Rosner. Yes. Kate Kutash. Yes. Diana Meyer. Yes. Patty Newman. Yes. James Rosetti. No. No. Amy Romano? No. Kathy Lewis? Yes. I have five yeses and two noes. Okay, so the motion to remove it, remove it and go back to the <coughs> committee, subcommittee with it. All right. So um, it from the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right, now. Can I, Madam Chair, can I ask when these meetings are going to be? Yes. They're going to be announced at our meeting tonight. Well, no, during during the reports, like policy, we'll say when the next meeting is going to be. Teaching and learning, will say when the next meeting is going to be. In a that, nutshell, that's well, during the that's policy is August 9th, and teaching and learning is September 13th. So we're definitely going to have these subcommittee meetings. Yes, yeah. we, like I said, we haven't had a lot of subcommittee yes, meetings. Yes, you have. That's not stuff. 
Well, a debt is first, first of all, first of all, a lot of the subcommittee, we haven't even had a finance committee meeting this month. Let me tell you. It's let, let me tell it's you. July. I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Oh, okay. okay? Excuse me. I'm speaking. The, the uh, uh, subcommittees, uh, most of our subcommittees are being scheduled every other month. We don't meet monthly. Right. That's okay. And then you yeah. said we don't meet monthly. I said uh, most of the committees are now meeting every other month, and then when they get postponed, they're not meeting for three or four months. I haven't postponed. We, we had a discussion in July. I'm just saying, this is what happens. We don't have a lot of subcommittee meetings. And you're saying we do. And I'm saying we don't. So we disagree. And we can. You're absolutely correct. So we disagree. Okay. I know what my calendar is. Okay, you get it. You write it down. That's why we have a finance committee. We, we send finance. Now we're a million dollars over. We don't even know what we're doing anymore. Uh, I would like to address that. Mm -hmm. okay. Finance chair, yes. We, we're having it. Mr. Heffelfinger and I agreed that he needed time to work on his numbers, and everybody agreed that we would not be having these meetings in July. We're having one August 10th. I even moved it up a week. Mm -hmm. so. As a matter of fact, I was asked to eliminate this board meeting tonight. Really? Yes, by Mr. Taglia. What? Yeah, he said, why don't I just, not, no meetings in July at well, all. Well, that, that's your say because he's not here. You said Mr. Taglier. Okay, well. Let's move on. Yeah, we're yeah, just going to move on. I'm not, I don't, I don't feel like arguing or whatever. Okay, um, I would like to uh, make a motion to add the following items to the agenda following the consent agenda. The first item is discussion and possible action on the Boys and Girls Club request to waiver the building rental fee. We have to do that separately. Where's this on? And we're going to get a letter. Laura, we have the letters from? Yes. yes. We're adding. If, if it's Jim. added, we'll pass out the If letters. it's added, we'll pass out the letters. So um, you're adding this? Yeah. We're adding it to the consent agenda. No, not the consent. Oh, I mean, it's we're the adding it to the agenda. agenda. Yeah. Following the consent agenda. What, what okay, it? it's it's the the item um, last year. I don't know if you recall, we had the Boys and Girls Club, so what, they want. Why don't we get? Where we're you get the, it? Yeah. I, I didn't hear where you want to put it. We're going it to put it. Four. It would be yeah. number four. The new number. The new number four. Okay. Do I do that separate, or can I do this? You have to do it separate. Okay, so um, can I have a motion to approve or second, whichever? Okay, I made the motion. I'll I made the motion. Kate, second. All right, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion carries. Okay, I'd also like to make a motion to um, discuss and have a discussion and possible action. <coughs> regarding strategy and negotiations concerning a claim involving an employee with respect to which the board is a party. And it may be held in executive session. It will be held in executive session, and you'll find out why. That would be five. That would be five. Madam Chairperson? Yes. The motion should include who you are inviting into the executive session also. Oh, okay. I thought I'd make that motion after we approve we adding this to the agenda. Very good. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Yeah, Attorney Stan, she's going to add it to the agenda. If it's added to the agenda, then we, she'll make the right. motion to move to executive session and, and invite you. Okay. okay. All right. The motion was made by me, seconded by uh, Kate. Um, any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to the approval. Approval the agenda as amended. Okay. Now I'd like to have a motion to approve the consent agenda no, as amended. I mean the agenda the as amended. So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, motion made by Kate and seconded by Lorraine. Any discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I am. Okay. One opposed. Uh, I'm opposed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Carl and Amy are all yeah. the, the three. The three. Three are opposed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. Uh, 
Now you've got the consent agenda. Okay, now we have it. <laughs> okay, so the motion carries, and now I'm going on to number. Okay. Okay. Do you want to well, you got to do the consent agenda first. Okay. We get yeah. there. I'll, I'll take them. He'll take them. Okay. Um, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So I move, Madam Chair. Motion. Second. Okay. Motion made by Kate, seconded by Lorraine. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. All right. So now we're going to the number four. Now we're going to number four. Which is this? Yeah. Thank you. So, so, we're, so we're not, we're, we're moving it as an agenda item to discuss. So okay. if you'd like to turn it over, I'll gladly Yes, share. I'm turning item, agenda item four over to the superintendent about the action of the Boys and Girls Club request for a waiver. Okay, okay. just, just um, earlier this week, after the agenda had already been sent um, for city charter, I received a letter from Shay Roscoe, who's the executive director of Boys and Girls Club. Uh, last year, so so let me take a step back to, and re remind the board. Um, Boys and Girls Club provides uh, an after school program. Um, they've had it for quite some time, before an after school program for quite some time for parent drop off and for parents who can't come to school. It's always existed at Elizabeth Shelton for years. Very successful. Um, last year, and the board was aware of it, they wanted to expand the program. They expanded it to um, Booth Hill and Mohegan. They were at Booth Hill, Mohegan. Um, because of the circumstances of, ex of expanding it during the year, the success rate of having it go off the ground and the impact of the pandemic, Boys and Girls Club last year requested from the board that if they put these two programs in for the betterment of our community, would the board be willing to waive the building rental fee for just Mohegan and Booth Hill? And last year, the board did approve and waived the fee. They did not pay the fee last year. That was decided by this board a year ago. But they, still they, they still paid for Elizabeth Shelton. Okay. They did not pay for the other two by action of the board. Shay sent a letter to me to ask, you know, requesting from the board, which I'll pass out, they would like to run these programs again. They are asking for a second year to waive the rental fee for Booth Hill and Mohegan. They would still pay Elizabeth Shelton, but they're asking the board to consider, and this is the letter, uh, to waive it for a second year. So if you'd like to take a look at the letter, and then I will be able to answer any questions if I can. I don't need to put our principals on spot that are here, but all the principals where the program runs in their building this past year happen to be here. So if they, if we need to comment or ask you a question, I can defer to them if it's something that I may not know. Do you have one for the record? I do. Okay. Oh, no, I, 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 I have to get one for the financial. What is, what is it for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They run an after school program. Yeah. I don't oh, think they're after school program in the summer. After school program during the school year. Keep thinking oh, of something. During the school year, yeah. Um, child. It's child care. Well, that would be for, I guess, for you to consider and tonight. Just so the board is aware, for full, full disclosure, I want to, you know, they are not the only community service club that provides an after or before school program. The YMCA does it as well. They are located at Sunnyside. Um, and we also have, in conjunction with the hideout, but hideout doesn't use the facilities of Mohegan. They're literally, like, next, next, next door. door. They're, they're walking distance from, yeah. mm -hmm. from Mohegan. So, so there are several organizations, at least Boys and Girls Club and YMCA, that both utilize our building space for these programs for our... Do, does or do, uh, does uh, YMCA pay the full amount of the amount? They do. YMCA pays See, their rental fee. My, I, I think last year, if I can recall correct, correctly, we did that because of the pandemic and the parents getting back into yeah. the work and everything. My, my concern is that we went into a, um, uh, a big discussion with our building, with John Calhoun about our building fees. Now, if we continue to do this, and I'm not opposed, I mean, I love the program, please understand that, but I'm just concerned about 
will, are we being fair to the others or will we have others? I mean, we have other people that use our, our, our buildings as well, correct? Like yes, we do. basketball, bitty basketball, brownies. So we charge them the fee um, for in-town nonprofit, which is approximately $100. Um, last year, I looked it up before this meeting, um, Boys and Girls Club paid a total of $4,000 in the rental fee of Elizabeth Shelton alone. They didn't pay for the other two buildings, so they, they paid a total fee of $4,000. So what's, what's the financial impact? I mean, is there any, you know, like uh, the chair just spoke of custodian, and, and that, that's, that's my concern too, you know, like some of the programs, custodial fees. Well, and that, that's, I mean, we, we charge a building rental fee. It's not a money-making endeavor for us. Oh, no, no. It, it, it is done. I, don't, I think we're a nonprofit organization. No, and it is done to cover the costs associated with additional custodial fee, additional maybe security fee, the custodian's um, contract based on who may be in a building. If it's a part-timer in a building, then a full-time custodian part in the contract, part-timers can't lock up the building. So a full-time custodian may have to go there later in the evening to lock up the program when it's over. So there's an association that may be charged to that because the full-time custodian is getting paid to stay later to lock up a building that may be open. So there are fees. And I believe Mr. Calhoun did an exceptional job at readjusting the fees this past year to cover these costs. Mm -hmm. So whenever we waive a fee, we are possibly considering some kind of impact that the board will absorb. Minor, it may be minor, you know, when you talk about it, um, but there is something. But, and I'm just, I wanna always advise the board appropriately. I mean, the board is well aware of the financial woes we had last year with the deficit that occurred. Mm -hmm. Every dollar counts, mm -hmm. you know? I agree with what the chair just said. Boys and Girls Club does an exceptional job and provides a service for our community. But at what point in time yeah, does another sense. organization say, well, you waived it for Boys and Girls Club, can you waive it for us? You know, and do you, now, I have a suggestion, and it's a board decision of consideration. They, they paid for Elizabeth Shelton the full price. They are increasing their program by, by two, so tripling their costs we can maybe give them an adjusted rate. Mm -hmm. You know, like sometimes like when you see, scale. when you see that, you know, if, if people, yeah, if you buy, you know, if you rent two places, the third one is free right. or there's an adjustment of that. <laughs> so we somewhat do not lose costs, but like still a, help a, them yeah. in the idea of building the program. Mm -hmm. In talking to Shay, cause she called me before she sent the letter, she explained that one of the reasons behind it is because they charge obviously parents because they have staff to pay. And the programs were great, but they were small in nature. They had small numbers at those two schools. And they're fearful that if, if the numbers remain small for them, they're not gonna bring in the profit to continue the programs because they're gonna be expelling costs for building fees and everything, and then the programs are gonna shut down. So they want another year to kind of continue to market and build. Mm -hmm. They believe that the numbers may have been lower this past year because of the reluctance of parents to send their kids to the programs because of COVID. Wow. Like I'm not gonna have my kids stay longer in school, longer than they have to, and with kids that aren't in their, you know, their bubble, these are other kids. Yeah. And so they're thinking if we have another year of normal, I'm using that quotation, school, we're like, we're not without masks, we don't have COVID restrictions, maybe parents would have to send them, then we'll recoup the fee, things will go back, you know, those type of things. So these are all considerations. Could um, we yeah, okay. I was, I was thinking that, uh, and just a, a thought about, uh, because I know like in the in the private schools, like they do give you a discount for your second, well, I don't know about all private schools, but for your second and third or whatever, maybe, maybe, maybe we just reduce for, you know, if they pay 4,000 for it, Elizabeth Shelton, maybe to give them the opportunity, but maybe charge them a 1,000 or 2,000 for each other. Mm -hmm. I, I just have a question because I'm, I'm not really familiar with this program, mm -hmm. but um, it seems to me like we're tired with this is Mohegan and Blue Hill and, and Elizabeth Shaw. And Elizabeth Shaw. And, and, and Elizabeth Shaw. Okay. Well, Mohegan and Blue Hill, I mean, they never have any problem raising funds, you know, when it comes to PTA events or whatnot. And what, I, I mean, I, if you said to me Sunnyside and Long Hill, mm -hmm. I might say, well, yeah, you know, the, you know, that might be a little harder hit area in our town. 
well, Sunnyside does have a program, Jim. They have the well, YMCA. You that's know. what I'm saying. Do, do we waive their fee? No. No. Unless they're mean. And, and to your point, Mr. Rossetti, and I'm just going to ask without, since to, to educate the board, do any of you want to speak to the program so they can have a better idea of what actually happens? Are they here? The principals, no, no, the are, principals here. are here. The mm -hmm. principals are here who have the program in their building. They have the program so, in their building. So, so that's okay. That's, that's okay. Well, it would be I, nice I, to hear what, what it is. Um, yeah, but we're getting back to the, the fee structure. That's what I'm worried about. Like, what, you know, what is it going to cost the board? Mm -hmm. don't, don't we do that for like. Like when a uh, PMC school comes in and uses subsequent days, or when Center State form for several days, we did reduce rates. Well, they did an. an, an in an the past, we did a redu reduction for Center Stage when they used when they did their youth connection at Shelton High School because they had many performances, right. so they were in there for weeks. Right. But I also want to. Well, it's similar. They were a local nonprofit. Right. So we did that, you know, like, so but, but we had like there. dance studios yeah. who That's are a for, for profit organization. We've never waived those fees right. because they are a for profit organization. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We have to have them nailing everything into the stage, too. What's your recommendation, Mr. Superintendent? Can I ask one question? Yes. Just sure. Clarify. I'd be happy to answer that. Yeah, yeah just one more question from what Jim said. Um, so, it's actually the Boys and Girls Club are paying for this. It's not the Mohegan School Committee or the Food Pillar. No, it's the parents. So it's really, it's coming. It, 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 for a lack of a better term, and, I, and I'm not, you know, like, again, it, it's a daycare system. Like, parents are paying yeah, right. for someone to watch their child so they can go to work, and they might not get out of work till 5 o'clock, and, and school gets out at no, 4 o'clock. So it's, it, it's, and it's the Boys and Girls Club who's incurring the actual fee. And the need well, the Boys and Girls they, Club charge, charge, so the parents pay. But did they charge the parents last year, and we didn't yes, charge them? Yes, yes. Correct. They, they, uh, but you remember, but they, they have other costs. Right. I mean, just no, I know. they have I a know. staff. They have to pay their staff, and so, they have to do okay. that. So, yeah. They are, from, from what I read in social media, Boys and Girls Club is the most reasonable before mm -hmm. and after school yes. Yes. in town. Yeah. And they, they yep. also charge on the funding, too. Thank you. And they, they charge in based on how many siblings there are, based on the cost mm -hmm. um, we just talked about that. for that. Mm -hmm. There's a sliding scale for it. But it's a very popular program, um, and especially in so the it, morning. And there is the need now with more and more people going back and they're going to back to right. right. I think at the point they started it last year, there was still a ton of people working from home. Right. Yeah. Getting back to my point, Mohegan yes. School District and the other districts, and, and we're, we're getting back to the chair's point, where is it going to stop? So, so to answer Mr. Rossetti's question, my recommendation um, is that some type of fee be collected, whatever, whatever the board determines that number would be. And I would not even, I would not put in the minutes that they did two and one's free, because then one's free. You know, so like it's it's you could reduce the cost of so that it looks like no matter what school or what situation relative to that sliding scale, they paid something. Um, but but I think it just covers the board in the future for any other organization that comes and then sits in front of you and said, but you waived it for Boys and Girls Club. Why won't you waive it for us? I think, you know, you, you, have, you have policies. Mm -hmm. You're setting a precedent. Correct. Yeah. You Correct. Know, I, if I could just speak to, I just, because I, I was a member of the Boys and Girls Club. I remember graduating from a busy school junior. Oh, there you go. go. With a card or one, I think. <laughs> so I'm definitely partial. Um, I'm inclined to do, I just think it's a win-win for the whole community. I'm inclined to waive the fee for them for one more year and make sure that that well, program is okay. successful. Okay. I understand precedents, and I think I can argue against the precedent. We are charging them something already. Just, um, but just for, for one, I, I was going to suggest that if they do, well, I don't know, just if they're doing four thousand for one, maybe the second one could be two thousand and the third one <coughs> thousand. You know. Well, so it's seven thousand. So, so seven for all three, and this way they are paying something. And then with the understanding that we're making the accommodation for this year so that they can recoup and see where their program is going. I understand what you're saying. Carl, if we had the money, if we had, yeah, you well, know. I, I always question the fee for it to be given, to be honest, because for Little League, we rent the gym and we would be charged a fee. So we're paying for a, a, a janitor or whatnot who's already there. 
and they just don't want to do it. And the owner does too. Well, the, well, well they do so, additional so assignments. Additional assignment that may cost us overtime in the end if they have to stay later to clean up more areas. That, that would be the And, and the reason, and I want to just make sure that the board is aware, the reason why, you know, Shay spoke to me, she got this letter as soon as possible, and I appreciate the board putting it on the agenda tonight because they need to know what the decision is because subsequently okay. that's going to determine how they're yeah, going to market it and whether they're going to keep that. a program open. Right. They, they need to start well, sending notices and, out and now in August. That, that what we're offering to, to kind of reduce the fee, but quite frankly, we don't know if that's going to be enough help or not. Well, I would think as opposed to $12,000. Because right. you're, you're really, you're I mean, you really, we're really, I mean, okay, and even, or even go like to 1500 and a 1000 but I just think that something should be paid only because there are other organizations that, that may come to us and say, yeah, like you do this for them, why can't you do that for us? I, I see what you Yes. Is this program running over the summer too? No. No. No? Okay, because in North Haven it is. Yeah. And so it's yeah, they, they have Boys and Girls Club downtown. So they, so they do it through the downtown. Yeah, yeah so parents it. will drop their kids off at the facility. Okay. Do so we they don't lose the it. program runs just not in our building. Just not in our building. Yeah. Got it. See, and Carl, the other thing is that sometimes um, a custodian works his regular shift until, till say, 4 or whatever, and then they have to call a sub, sub in, which sometimes that ends up paying time and a half because they have to pull they have to pull an extra duty or you know so they get more money so i mean and and of course yeah. electricity i don't know how yours is but yeah. i know how mine is and heat and everything else yeah so and, i mean we chair i'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve the sliding scale for the second and third schools as noted before what was that with the two and the one four thousand two thousand one thousand okay but can i make an amendment to that Yes. Would that just be uh, for this year? For, for this year. Right. Next year. Right. For the 22, 23 year. Correct. School year. Okay. Okay. All right. We have a motion made by Kate. Did I'll you get it? Okay. It's seconded by Lorraine. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I guess it's motion carries. Abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Okay. Motion now I have to go into Okay. Yes. All right, now I have to. <laughs> I have all these papers. You have to excuse me. Oh, the public comment is going on. Yeah. Oh, that's after. That's after. Okay. okay. All right, um, now I move that the board add to the agenda. Yeah. No, no. Sorry, no. where is it here? I move the soup. Where is it? Oh, I further move. Oh, no. Where is it on the other page? So. Executive session. Yes. We have to go into executive well, session. Well, I move the board that we, we go into executive we, session to discuss. Right. I move that the, the board um, go into executive um, session for discussion and uh, no possible action until afterwards regarding strategy and negotiations concerning a claim involving an employee to which the board is a party. I further move this, that the superintendent of schools, Kenneth Serenich, director of operations, Carol Pinozo, and board counsel, attorney Frederick T. Stanek, be invited to participate in the executive session. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I can't vote. You can't vote. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't count. Carol, all right. She doesn't want to be here. All right. <laughs> Uh, motion carries, and we will go into executive session. It I is seven, seven thirty-four. All right. We have come out of executive. We are coming out of executive session. It is um, seven fifty-two. No votes were taken. Hang on, Lori's going to get back. She's there. She's there. She's ready. Lori, I'm sorry. She's there. She's there. She's okay. Sorry, but she's okay. <laughs> Okay, now, um, I would like to make a motion. I move that the superintendent of schools, Kenneth Serenich, be empowered to execute a settlement agreement discussed in executive session on behalf of the board. We need a second? Second. Second made, it was made by Kate Kutash. All right, any other discussion? Sensing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? 
Abstentions? Okay, and this motion carries. You said, I uh, guess, maybe you should do the roll call. Okay, roll vote, <laughs> roll call vote. For, for this motion. For this motion, please. Uh, Tori Rosta? Yes. Kate Kutash? Yes. Diana Maya? Yes. Patty Newman? Yes. Gene Dorizetti? Yes. Carl Rizzo? Yes. Amy Romano? Yes. Kathy Lillard? Yes. Okay, um, eight yeses, and we have one board member that is excused. Okay, right. motion carries. Motion. Okay. okay. Now, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> so you know which piece of paper I am. <laughs> I feel like Judge Judy here. You know. <laughs> okay. Um, agenda item six: public comment. Per board policy numbers 9323 and 9325, five minutes allotted to each speaker. No Board of Ed employee, student, or community member should be defamed within public comment. Any members of the public who wish to speak briefly before the board must only comment on matters associated with the Board of Education business. Persons wishing to address the Shelton Board of Education are limited to Shelton residents, parents of current students and employees of Shelton Public Schools or service contracted providers of Shelton Public Schools. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak? I do. I'm going to go up. Five minutes. Mrs. Romano, are you? Are you sure, I'm ready. Okay. I don't have anything prepared because I was planning on talking about this in a nice. Wait, uh, uh, excuse yep. me. Are you speaking? Yep, Amy Romano, Six Friends Way. Are you speaking as nope, a parent? Nope, I'm speaking as a parent. Okay. So Thank I am you. upset, then I'll change the way I'm speaking. I am upset that the board decided to take off the agenda two items that I feel are imperative that we speak about. Um, the board that they speak about for the community. One, there was a bill that was passed last July that the state of Connecticut um, made an addendum to their, let me get the correct wording, the Healthy and Balanced Living Curriculum Framework. It is extremely controversial. Um, it is known to be controversial. We, at, you know, I know that it was added to the agenda. I even had personal conversations with Mr. Cernich about it. The community doesn't want it. It sounds like we could opt out of it, which is great, um, but I'm just looking to see why the board doesn't want to have an initial discussion to start getting this going because the school year is right around the corner. So again, it's, it, it needs to be talked about. The, the state came up with their, their framework back in March. It's already been four months. So now it's being pushed till when? August, September, October? I, the, I think the parents of this community, you know, need to know how we are standing on this issue. Um, because again, like I said, there are very controversial things in there. It's 81 pages long. I've read it. There's stuff in there about gender identity. People don't want to do this. It talks about abortion. It talks about anal sex, oral sex, things that we don't want to discuss in our classroom. But again, nobody wanted to have that initial discussion tonight. So again, it wouldn't have been a controversial discussion, it's just the initial discussion on saying, what do we do and how do we move forward mm -hmm. to make this happen? But that didn't happen. Now on the second request I see removed off the agenda was our discipline policies. I would hope that now the policy chairwoman, please look at policies 5000, 5000, 5131.91. 5131.911, 5131.11a, as well as our athletic, athletic code of conduct handbook to be reviewed immediately. Obviously, the community is torn. We are well aware of the partying and drugs and alcohol that has taken place and children that have died in our community because of this. And there was 50 Shelton students there, 50, and nothing is doing Nothing's happening, nothing's happening. 
but we have code of conducts, we have discipline policies, and nothing is happening. We have to protect our students. We have to protect the community. We are being watched. People are watching us. Other, other schools are doing things about it. But, but if we have these policies in place, we have to enforce them. We can't pick and choose who we decide to get in trouble. We can't. You know, it, it's, I, I even had a problem myself in June over a bullying incident with my own child. And to me, the way that it handled ended in a conversation of, should I call my attorney? And I had to call my attorney. That's sad. That's sad. Okay, and these policies have to be looked at. The, and, and not even the, the wording, the enforcement of the policies. We have a nice video up right now to the athletes, they start August 15th, talks about, if you're caught doing all these things, we're gonna suspend you. You will be removed from the team. Wow, well I think we need to practice what we preach in Shelton, because it's not happening. It's not happening. And if we keep enabling these kids to keep doing these things, then th this, is what it, this is what it's gonna come to. More deaths, more people dying. Uh, it's time to step up and have the discussions. And I know it's not fun, but this is part of our job to make sure that they are enforced and to make sure that they are followed properly. Thank you, Mrs. Romano. And I'm upset that the board took 10 minutes on Boys and Girls Club, but doesn't want to talk about these things to protect our students. We do want to talk about them. And we will talk about them. And I invite you to both meetings to participate in, in them. Uh, any other member of the public who wishes to speak? Any other member of the public who wishes to speak? I'll speak. Okay. So I'm Patty Moonen, and I live at 100 Parrot Drive, number 1704. I'm speaking as a resident and as a taxpayer. I, my kids did not grow up in this town, and they didn't go to school here. But I have to tell you, I've been blown away by the people I've met here. At the quality of the people, the quality of the teachers, the quality of the, the um, principals, I am, I'm just amazed. And I can compare it to a neighboring town who supposedly has such a great school district. That this school district is phenomenal. And I really want to commend every one of, every one of you. Actually, I should turn around and say, commend every one of you for what you do. Because I can compare it to another district. And to private schools, too, because some of my kids went private. So on the, on, on the other hand, I wanted to you know, also say that this contributes to the fact that the Connecticut public schools have been ranked number two in the nation, just behind our neighbor to the north, Massachusetts. And it's because of the quality of these, kind of, these people here that we have this. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak? I think that was the fourth time. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> okay. All right. Sensing none, we will go move on to um, the superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, as of this Friday, uh, on this Friday, we will conclude our extended school year and summer school program. Um, it ran very successful this year. We are very happy with the involvement of our staff. Uh, the engagement of our students and, and what took place in these four weeks that seemed to fly by. Um, just so the board understands what happened in, in our extended school year this year, we had 124 students in grades um, K through six who were just involved in uh, an academic boost program, like an accelerated program. They were there under their own choice or parent choice um, to support the growth of their child's academics. Uh, 25 students, uh, grades seven through 12 were there for credit recovery based on the board policy. If you have failed a subject for you to advance to the next grade, you have to go and get credit recovery. So we had 25 students there. Uh, 23 students were involved in our pre-K um, special ed program. 148 students were involved in our extended year special ed program. Um, totaling, we had a total population of 320 students who participated in our summer program. And as I said, um, I thank the staff for their hard work. An extremely successful program this year. 
um, and we're just getting ready for the fall. Uh, I know I communicated this board, um, but for the purposes of the public as well as the board again, um, we have selected Whitson's to be our service food provider. Um, we're moving forward. They have successfully been our service food provider for the past five years. We are now re-engaging and moving forward for a multi-year uh, contract with, with them again. Um, Todd has been working with them um, in, in uh, solidifying all the negotiating contracts uh, of what's moving forward and it should be squared away soon based on the state statute of what has to happen. Um, we were a little delayed and it was encompassing in this month because of City Hall. They had a position uh, op opening elimination at City Hall where the purchasing agent had left and that kind of threw a monkey wrench in accelerating this process and I thank Todd for all the work he's done for this because he picked up more than he anticipated with the changes in City Hall staffing. Um, speaking of contracts, we did receive the contract um, from our attorney uh, relative to the bus contract. Um, as you know, um, our, our corporate counsel represents the city and the Board of Ed. Um, Fran Teodosia is being the lead counsel in negotiating these figures. We've seen the contract, uh, both Todd and I have seen the contract. Um, we're very pleased at the language in the contract. I think one of the biggest pieces I think this board would appreciate as well, the, the last contract was um, perpetuated by uh, a court settlement. Um, all of that language is going to go away in the new contract. It'll just be a sincere contract between the Board of Education and the city. It'll have no kind of pieces associated with any type of um, law settlement, which is as it should be. Um, and we're looking at a multi-year. What, what, what's actually um, stopping the finalization of the contract is, is just the negotiation of the multi-year aspect. Uh, it would be in the benefit of the city and the Board of Ed if we can come to terms on multi-years as opposed to one year. We have the one year solidified. We know what the cost is for the year. All the other stuff is pretty much boilerplate on what we've done in the past. In terms of the, the contract with it, um, we're just finalizing the multi-year aspect of it. Um, I did meet with the mayor this week on Tuesday as well as um, Mr. Anglace and, and Mr. T. Diozio where we talked about the, con the, the bus contract a little bit. Um, we did talk about, the mayor and I individually talked about plans to improve bus servicing in the city. I'm very excited about those plans. It, it's independent of the contract itself, but some long-term plans of how we believe we can improve bus services even beyond what we're doing here. Um, and that's going to be worked out between the mayor and I. Um, we, we discussed the special ed cost coverage um, and have established a regular meeting and reporting that, that I'll work with the mayor and myself. Um, and the biggest piece that we discussed um, was the, the technology capital plan. Um, had a very fruitful discussion with the mayor. He understands our technology needs. He supports our technology needs. Um, based on the discussion that I had with him just yesterday, um, the, the meeting ended with him explaining to me that he wants to speak to his people and Paul in terms of how they would finance aspects of the technology plan, and he's scheduled to get back to me by the end of the week in a phone call to finalize that to move forward. So um, I think that's, that's great steps and continues to work with the, and show efforts of our collaboration with the city, um, which I'm really proud of and, and want to keep moving forward. Um, I know that Bill 6619, I was ready to speak to it tonight but was removed from the agenda. In light of public comment, I do want to say a few, a few comments then that I was ready to, to talk about uh, in the meeting and then we will discuss it further, but I'm going to include in my superintendent's report. Um, it is correct that Bill 66119 was passed by the state legislation, but the curriculum units have yet to be written. Right. We were just informed this past week by the state that all processes with this curriculum writing has been delayed. Implementation of this curriculum is not scheduled for 2023, and they informed us this week that that implementation date is now being pushed back. Um, all the bill did at this time was appropriate the funds to develop a curriculum. The curriculum. They have not developed the curriculum yet, they haven't written the curriculum units yet, nor, have they, nor do they have an implementation date on the curriculum units yet. Um, and I think what's important and to have a further discussion at teaching and learning about this particular bill 6619 it explicitly says and I did check with legal counsel on this in terms of legal counsel through the state um, it
it is optional for school districts. It is just money that was appropriated by the states to write curriculum. No school district has to adopt this curriculum. So um, it was really just a move on the state to write curriculum units. Um, but I'm, I'm welcoming a further discussion and even by teaching and learning, mm -hmm. even more information may come out because as we just got recent information this past week, Kristen and I received this information from the state. So um, I also just wanted my superintendent's report um, just for the record and for the video that's, that's out there that the general public sees, you know, the Shelter Public School System are, are mandated to follow all of our policies. Um, it is in every administrator and, and educator that is employed by the Shelter Public School System that they must follow Board of Ed policies. And I believe anything that is brought to our attention has been, um, and we have evidence to show that. And if any parent out there um, has a concern to express about something that has not been followed through, I highly encourage that they make a meeting with me and bring it to my attention so I can look into the matter and have it addressed. We cannot address situations that we are unaware of. Um, and then the other public comment, I wrote myself notes too, I wanna say, I wanna remind everyone as well, <coughs> um, a little more than a month ago, we had a wonderful graduation. I'm looking forward to the start of another school year. I'm very excited for that start of the school year. And along with what was said at public comment today, I just want to recall that our own mayor who spoke at graduation said, the pride of the city of Shelton is its educational system. So let's not forget that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I think I need a nap. Okay. <laughs> let's not take a nap. Communications to the board. Warren, do we have any communications? Comments by the board chair, that's me, okay. June, July, and August have often been referred to as the lazy, hazy days of summer, but it has been anything but that for our superintendent and central office leadership team. They've been busy with meetings, interviews, hiring for positions, planning professional learning activities for the 22-23 school year, working on closing out the 21-22 school year, and a variety of data analysis to name a few. I also would like to um, and that I know that we have many of our custodians and maintenance men working very hard to get our schools ready, which I just realized that it's really only like 24, sorry, 24 more weekdays. I didn't include the, the Saturday and Sunday. Just, I'm sorry, but you still have almost a month, so rest up. All right. <laughs> Um, although graduation was delayed one day, it was a wonderful night to be a part of and celebrate the, pr the pride, proud and happy grads. In your board packet are two articles, um, two articles that will be in the latest uh, Shelton Life issue due out in a week or so. I believe they will pique your interest as information is detailed about the academic and scholarship awards given by our community, as well as stats about the graduates percentages attending four-year, two-year higher of higher education, workforce, military, trade school. Thanks to Eric Martieri, Shelton High School guidance curriculum leader for meeting with me after school ended to assist with all of the information I needed for both articles. I mean, it's some really good stuff and the, the really nice thing is to realize how many, how many members of the community, former board members, former administrators, um, that, that are giving the scholarships out for these kids. It really is truly, what was it, how much, $580,000 or, or something? I can't remember. It was over 500000 Right, yeah. right. It was so, um, I'm it was also, okay, and then, um, Lori, do we have that yeah, by, the, the bylaw? I also want to pass out a copy of bylaw 9323 to serve as a gentle reminder about the addition of possible agenda items to be suggested. The time frame is seven days as, as the superintendent, vice chair, and I meet the Wednesday before the following board meeting to solidify the agenda. Our board administrative assistant then prepares it and sends it to our board attorney. And then the board attorney looks it over, makes suggestions for revisions or additions or deletions. And, um, that agenda has to be posted by the end of the week before the actual meeting. Thus, contacts have to be made to modify, change any items in question. And I would thank everyone in advance for following the time frame. Okay. 
And um, the last thing is, it, do you have that, uh, the article? Um, an article of interest appeared in the Connecticut Post recently, many, maybe many of you read it, and it demonstrates how important it is to tighten up the matters of policy. We'll be continuing with polish, polishing up a few policies, hopefully get the, working, the wording to reflect the language that all, with all members' input. All right, and this article just tells about uh, something that happened in Bridgeport with the Bridgeport chair. Really, I don't know if you read it or not, but it really is, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's gonna happen to us, but this is why it's important to really to get everything firmed up and, and be specific in, in our terminology when we're doing our policies. Um, lastly, I want to thank those board members for their suggested agenda items. These items will be addressed in teaching and learning and policy committee meetings, and I encourage them to attend and assist in the discussion and preparation to bring to the full board. I believe the superintendent and our di director of curriculum have been in discussion about these topics and have already planned on bringing them to the proper committee to begin working on. And that is the end of my commentary, and now I will go on to reports of standing committees. Teaching and learning? Yes, I am reporting on June as we had a special meeting in June and no report was given. The teaching and learning committee last met on Tuesday, June 21st. Kristen Santelli and Tina Xavier reported on spring WEA tests and the SEL survey data. In language arts, fall 2021 to spring 22, grades K through six met or exceeded national norm expectations. Grades seven through 12 neared expectations with the strongest showing in grade nine. Results were even stronger in math with all grade levels, K through 12, meeting or exceeding expected growth for the year. SPED students demonstrated growth in reading and math from fall to spring as well. While growth was observed in grades five through 12 for SPED students, it was not as strong in ELA. Subject-specific tests were administered in math and algebra one and two and geometry to students taking those courses. National norms were exceeded in all areas with grades nine and 10 demonstrating exceptional growth. Subject-specific science tests were administered in grades seven through 12 with growth observed in grades seven through 10. Grades 11 and 12, many courses were half your courses, so tests were not taken both. Um, winter and spring. Life science tests in grades nine through 11 also showed growth with the strongest in grade nine. <coughs> SEL survey results showed effects of the pandemic on our students in some areas on the student self-assessments. Decreases were noted in student empathy towards others and ability to self-manage. There were also dips in following directions in class, getting along with others, and ability to stay focused while working independently. Increases were noticed in a sense of belonging and student-teacher relationships. Family survey results noted improvement in family school communication and meeting student needs, with dips in how much effort students exert on school-related tasks and perseverance on those tasks. Fewer parents responded favorably as to whether their child enjoys going to school which I actually found amazing post-pandemic because you would think that I, I would have expected them to be glad to be back. Right. Uh -huh. And that's my report for a June meeting. And we will next meet on September 13th at 4.30. Right. Finance committee. Yep, um, we last met on June 15th and it was requested that all subcommittees take a break in July and I consulted with Mr. Fulkinger and he knew that he wouldn't be able to have his year-end reports done, so he actually was delighted to hear that that was suggested. So what we've done is we've moved up the August meeting to August 10th, so we can have those reports done right now on August 10th. And at what time are we going? Uh, same time. Same time, 6.15? 6.15. Okay. 5.45 is a special executive session, and I've Oh, yeah, that's right. right. Okay, policy. Policy will meet on August 9th at 4.30, and so far, agenda items are revisiting the bylaw 9222, resignation removal from office, policy 1312, public complaint, bylaw 9321, remote virtual meetings, uh, and the policy 5000 student discipline series. And I will investigate collegial letters of reference and see what other 
building the same ground. Oh, yes. Can I ask you, uh, Ms. Riles, is that a discussion on current policy on school discipline? Yeah. That's on there? Yeah. Yep. The whole series. On this the series. The series. series. Yeah, series. There's multiple. Oh, I feel bad about missing that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What time is that at? 615? No. No. 430. No. 430. I'm not Skyping. I'm going to my daughter's. Yeah, I think Thank you. All right. Uh, reports of liaisons, CES. Does not meet in the summer. We refer to next meet the first Thursday in September. Cabe? Um, Cabe is just busy preparing for its summer leadership conference, which is August 18, mm -hmm. uh, from 1 to 7.15 at Water's Edge. Topics include public education in Connecticut, opportunities and challenges, building a supportive climate for students and staff, school safety, and student voice. Thank you. Um, Agenda item 12, for your information, you have a vacancy report, staff and stipend actions, enrollment report. Bus date allowed, but it was no issues at this yeah, time. Yeah, we don't have Special that. education, Shelton Life articles, and your 22-23 school year, including back to school night dates. Celebrations, nothing at this time. I have, I have a, you have a celebration? I do, yeah, I don't know if Matt celebrates. Shelton uh, Little League okay. is playing in the sectional, state sectional tournament tonight. Oh. They were one of the top oh, well. four teams that I played. Is that uh, the last time they went this far, they went all the way to Williamsport. So that's wow. Oh, and yeah. when are they playing this? They're playing right now. Right now? Yeah. Where are they playing from? They're in like Miami. Okay. okay. They're playing Fairfield right now. Wow. Oh, yeah. I heard about Fairfield. Yeah. All right. Well, good for them. Let's hope they win. Yeah. All right. And now. Okay. Um, now we are going to um, move into another executive session to discuss the superintendent's uh, contract salary. And um, I'm, uh, I'm inviting, well, I'm making a motion to do that. And I'm inviting uh, all of the board members, Mrs. Pinozo, right? And that's it. Okay, that's right. No. No, I think, okay. And, and is that okay, Fred? That's no. fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, <laughs> and, and he gets to go home. And uh, that's it. Can I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Um, we are going to go into executive session about 825. <laughs> yeah. Okay, oh, um, <laughs> we are coming out of executive session. It is 8.42, uh, no votes were taken. And with that, now I'm going to ask for a motion, a possible action or a motion of the superintendent's contract and salary that we discussed. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the superintendent's contract, contract as discussed in salary. executive session and That's salary. salary. And, and Carl seconded. Oh, Carl can second. Okay, Carl seconds it. I'd like to second it. I'm going like, to say, Mr. Zeldin, because I'm the secretary. <laughs> okay, any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion carries. And with that, um, we are adjourned at 844.